Why do you wanna end? Was it real or just pretend? Tell me why do you wanna end? Review of TV, welcome back to the channel, new subscribers. Welcome to, I hope you guys uh, enjoy these videos and if you've already seen some of our previous videos, you probably already know what I'm talking about then. So we're on to our next uh, accessory. I don't know if this is really an accessory or more like a safety device, but we're gonna go ahead and install some four point harnesses today by Ace Racing. So uh, I haven't seen too much about these uh, particular belts out there so far, so we're gonna go ahead and make a video of our own today with these, uh, these particular four point harnesses. Um, here's an example of one right here, so if you're looking to see what they kind of look like or the quality, I can kind of just give you guys a quick little peek at them. They'll sit pretty nice once they're installed, so of course we'll show you guys how to install those, but that's what we're looking at so you guys can see right off the bat what these harnesses are looking at. Um, th there's probably mixed opinions, there's better quality ones of course, but I found that this one for uh, my machine, which is a Can-Am X3, it's a Maverick X3, uh, it actually has some better size holes right here on the buckles, which we're still going to have to make some slight modifications on these particular holes because sometimes the holes on these buckles aren't quite round enough to be able to fit that swivel bolt through that goes into your seat. So we'll talk more about that here in a few minutes. But for now, let's jump into our tool list, like always, so you guys can see what some basic tools are that you'll need for this installation. I did want to show you guys this installation because when you're looking online and you're finding your, your, uh, your four-point harnesses, whatever brand or manufacturer you guys decide to use, um, there's different types of uh, marketing um, spiels that they put on these belts saying, easiest, install in 15 minutes, yada, 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 the whole nine yards, but it's not that easy. It's easy, but there's always going to be some time in between to make some modifications and adjustments that can slow the whole process down. So we'll try to put that all in this video today and then speed it up, cut it down a little bit and make it to where you guys can watch it pretty, uh, pretty fast and a reasonable amount of time. So let's go ahead and jump to the tool list. All right, guys, here's a kind of a list of some tools, basic tools you might have around the house, vice grip being one. You don't need the stand, of course, just have a vice grip so you can put your buckles in there when you widen the holes up on the buckles. Um, some basic household tools that usually most people have, so it makes this kind of installation real easy, is uh, some sockets, standard, metric, just have a little bit of both. Uh, you're going to want some ratchet wrenches, and I'm, what I mean is you can do the job a lot easier if you do have ratchet wrenches, but if you don't, uh, standard, or standard uh, wrenches will work as well. Um, a step bit. Now this is the bit you're going to use to drill the holes a little bit wider on your harness buckles. So if you have one of this, uh, bits, one of these la these bits uh, laying around, it's going to definitely make it a little bit easier to widen the holes on there. If not, trying to use some standard drill bits might be sloppy, and uh, but I'm sure you could get it done either way. Um, impact uh, drill, a regular drill, um, and then of course some hardware guys. We ended up having to buy a little bit of extra hardware, and uh, the reason is, is because the two bottom bolts that hold the buckle and the seat belt on the bottom of your seats, all four of the seats in this particular four-seater, <laughs> um, come with the seatbelt. One holds the seatbelt on, the other one holds the uh, latch where you buckle your seatbelt into. Um, those bolts are there, so you have the two bottom harness bolts that'll fit. But as far as the two harness bolts that go up over your shoulders into the back of the seat, you'll need uh, two bolts for each seat, so a total of eight. Of course, you're going to want 16 washers and then uh, eight lock washers. And I'll show you guys up close when we get some out here and show you. Use the, the grade A and eight, I mean grade, grade eight is the grade of these bolts and stuff that you want to use. So um, this is the type of bolt the, that you'll see. It's kind of like a goldish looking color. These are real durable bolts and they'll stand up a lot better if you're not going to order special uh, harness bolts that you can probably find online somewhere. I have a local hardware store, I had the same thing. Because the harness uh, that goes up over your shoulder doesn't need to really swivel, then you can use just a standard bolt without having a beveled uh, edge right here that allows the harness to twist. So for that I got a lock washer, has the little lock um, plastic ring inside of there to keep this from spinning undone, causing the seatbelt harnesses to come loose during motion. You're going to want a lock washer. What it does is when you pinch it down it will pinch the uh, lock washer and the nut up against the thread of the bolt like that and it puts pressure so it doesn't allow it to spin and come off. And with, between a lock washer and a lock nut and uh, some standard washers. You can make this work really easy for those particular harness straps. So <clears throat> we're gonna go ahead 
and uh, jump into the first step, which is going to be widening the holes on the harnesses. We'll show you guys how we're going to do it, so that way you can kind of get an idea of where you want to go with it. Um, and then we'll show you the particular bolt. This bolt right here <clears throat> actually came off of the Can-Am seat already, the seat belt for a seat that I already uh, loosened up. Um, and you can see on the edge here, what I mean is the seat belt will, the buckle will go over this smooth uh, spot, allowing it to swivel. Um, but it doesn't fit, this part of the bolt doesn't fit completely through the hole, so we're gonna widen it just so this whole thing can go through. Um, other than that, um, you don't have to do any other modifications, you'll just be using your extra hardware and then you'll be able to get everything going. All right guys, so the first thing to do is to take your step bit, get a drill, get a vice grip. You can see I just have the strap to put in here. I used a little towel to put around the buckle so it doesn't uh, bind it up or leave little nicks and stuff, keep it smooth. Uh, keep your bolt close by because all you want to do is put it through until that smooth part of the bolt like I showed you that helps it to continue to swivel. Uh, when it's locked in place, <clears throat> um, can fit through the hole. You don't want to go wider than that because if you do, you're going to ruin the seatbelt. You don't have a lot of depth in, or width in here or left before you go to the edge of the belt on the outside, which would make it not strong enough to use anymore. So just take your time, get that bit in there, just do a little bit at a time on each side. Try your bolt once you get it in. It's about the only way I can tell you to, to make it work properly. If your vice grip starts to move a little bit, just get it tighter. Do it on one side. Now it's on the way here, but that's the way it works. Well, that's all you want to do is just go a little bit wider. Now let's see if this is going to fit all the way through. If it does, and I won't have to go any further. Not quite yet. It's just about there, so I'm going to have to go a little bit deeper in the center of this. <clears throat> and if uh, you find yourself having to go too deep to where it's eating up the, the last little bit of room you have around the buckle, then I would suggest just getting a like Dremel bit and going in there and then just smoothing it out, widening it that way. We're gonna try a little bit more of this first. On either side. And this bit makes it really nice because it, it kind of, uh, it does a real even and smooth job. It doesn't like nick it up and leave nicks and gouges. It makes just an even smooth hole. These bits are expensive guys. They could probably be about 40 bucks. So, uh, yeah. Okay guys, so I went ahead and did the initial hole on both sides with a step bit here. Just a little bit at a time. Um, what you want to do is take a, a maybe a, like a gold titanium bit here and just stick it inside the center of this hole and And what you're doing is you're just kind of, because when you go on the either side with a step bit, it leaves the center of this hole a little bit still thick. So you gotta kind of level it down a little bit. But the end result should be this when you stick your bolt through the seatbelt afterwards. And you can see if you zoom in and look at how tight that bolt sits in that hole right there on this side. Yeah, you, you can see that the bolt sits smooth. There's not a lot of play, but it still spins. So this part will tighten in. This little washer will rest up against it and bam. So do that to all, and make sure you guys don't do it to all the buckles, but all of the top or the bottom parts of your harness. So I'll show you what I mean real quick, because if you go drilling away and getting in too much of a rush, what will end up happening is, is you'll drill out the wrong holes that you didn't need to, and then you'll be there forever. So when the harness is on you guys like this, the two top ones that are going over my shoulders are gonna be for the special bolts and hardware we showed you. you. Don't need to drill any of the top harness holes, it's just these two bottom ones right here. And you can see, looking, how we widened it up just a little bit. So here's, here's how it comes, here's how it is. It still has plenty of buckle without making it uh, break off during a wreck. And you'll have four points of, of uh, strapping going around your body. So a little bit bigger, guys. As you can see, that's about right how much wider the hole's gonna be. Just a hair on either side. But once you get there, the bolt will fit correctly and swivel. So just the two bottoms is the only ones you're gonna drill out. With that being said, we'll finish these up and then we'll jump into the next clip for the next step. Okay guys, just the last recap of the final belt here. I just finished up drilling all the holes in all the harnesses. Step bit, that's what it looks like. Starts to drill out a little bit and get wider each time so you can do a little bit uh, at a time. You wanna do it on this end a little bit 
come around do a little bit more on this end and then vice versa until this bolt will fit through. Once the bolt fits through pretty evenly just like that, then what you want to do is just take your drill and go in there and just kind of do it real quick. It's just like you're using the drill bit as a sanding bit to just smooth out the inside of that hole a little bit better. And then that's it. That's all you got to do once you get all um, four of your harnesses done, the two bottom holes of the harness straps for each harness, then uh, basically it's just time to install. No further modification. So with that being said, we'll see you in just a second. All right guys, so the next step is, is to take out your seat. It doesn't really matter where you start, front, back, it's all the same. All the seats are gonna come out so you can do this the right way. You're gonna be taking off your old seat belts and uh, the seat belt um, extractor that actually kind of rolls <coughs> the seat belt up into this little, um, it's, it's kind of like a little box, like a little housing that the seat belt rolls into. Whatever the proper name of that is, that's what you're going to be taking out along with the seat belts. And of course where you buckle the seat belt in, the receiving side, so those are attached to the seats too. I went ahead and already had the bolts out from my last video. We just did the uh, whip light upgrade, so if you guys haven't seen that, go back and check that out. I'll leave it a description or a link in the description box. But so the two back nuts and there's two uh, front bolts. So let's just show you what they look like. These are the two nuts that are gonna go on the back of your seat that you gotta take off with an 18 uh, socket. And then you have a half inch, or 13 I should say, um, for the two front bolts that go into the two front parts of their seat. So there's four bolts all together. Two of these black ones, two of these. I have the other black one in my tray over here. So, uh, but yeah, we have two of those, two of those. And then the final bolt is for your seat belt. And that's what we were just showing you making wider on the harness uh, buckle so we could fit these bolts through. So look back here and I'll show you where the two nuts that I just showed you in my hand go. So if you're looking down here, one of the nuts goes on that. The other one's way down here, but oh, it's just on the other side, it might be tight to see, but right there and over here are the two <coughs> nuts. So take those two off. Then you'll come around to the front over here. I'll give you a little bit of lighting just to make this even better so we can see it completely. But Right here, if you look at this pipe, it sits right there. And then of course, these two bolts will go through that and like this with a nut on the back, through that hole and through the seat bracket. And then there's one more right in the back on this side. So two of those, two of the nuts, and then one seat belt buckle bolt. Um, once you get the four nuts out that are holding strictly the seat in, pull the seat out and then you can undo the last bolt for the seat belt and then that's it. Then you'll be taking apart uh, the seat belt uh, extractor or retractor, whatever you call that thing, uh, that winds the seat belt back up. So once we get those out, we'll go ahead and strap the new harnesses onto the seat and bolt it in place. We'll do the back seat, one of the back seats, not both because you don't need to see both. They're going to be done the same exact way. So we'll do one back seat and then we'll do one of the front seats. And then we'll wrap up the video. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and just take off the 5 8 bolts on the side of the seat. Once you get that out, as you can see, the seat belt comes out with it. And it's not the seat belt, but it's the actual, uh, where you plug your seat belt into. Um, <clears throat> just save these. I'd save them in case you ever decide to get rid of your four point harnesses for whatever reason or you never know, you might need a spare part, but yeah. So once you get that done, then you have your four point harness. So as we were showing you guys earlier, the bolt that I just took off is the reason why we had to drill the holes on these buckles a little bit wider. So that way that swiveling bolt would fit in correctly. You're gonna wanna adjust these as well. Once you get them plugged in and have the person sit in there, push the seat back, get it all adjusted. If you have certain people that are sitting in certain areas of the car most of the time, well then just have them custom design it for their fitting and of course you can change it later. So the two straps that go over your shoulder are just gonna go right through the seat like so. Doesn't matter, if they're just gonna kinda hang there for the time being so you don't have to be all fancy about it at first because we're not putting these ones in yet. But yeah, just kinda hang them there. If you want to come around here and look at this side, you can see that this little harness is kind of real tight. So you're going to make adjustments as you go to get this whole thing rolling better. So that way when you have it across your chest, you can loosen both sides of that to make it wider or smaller. But that's how that's going to sit. Then. 
the two seat belts or the four points of the harness, the two lower halves uh, will go through here like so, one on that side. And of course just tuck one off to the side here on this side. Get them started. Then you're just going to take your bolts that we showed you for the seatbelt and you're going to put this over that with this bolt going through it. Now that we've drilled them out, as you can see that bolt fits where it needs to so that the threading of the seat belt bolt can go all the way back down. And guys, I would probably, I don't know, I would feel more comfortable maybe not using the impact when you're tightening this and that's kind of why I got the ratchet wrench out. So <clears throat> once you get these in and tightened, you can just kind of put that one on loose for the time being. So that way you can do your other one. Um, then it's just, it's pretty easy self-explanatory as far as putting the buckles on. Uh, we'll get the other bolt put on the other side here and then we'll get ready to put the seat back in. Okay, so this is what it kind of looks like. We got one bolt here that we barely started and that's how it looks. And uh, it has a little bit of Loctite on there so that way it'll go in real tight. Um, once you get it tight with the Loctite, it shouldn't come out. And then that will sit nice and tight on that area. This one, I can do by hand because I already loosened it. But yeah, so the seatbelt on the opposite side, this point of the harness, will just sit like that. And that's just going to go in like this. And see, that's... That's what you wanted when you drilled the holes, was for that seat belt to come all the way up flush against the back of that. Like this. Now look. So, I'm going to torque it with my uh, wrench a little bit to where it needs to be. But see that? That's the whole point of that, is to make that fit. So, you, so if you have a Canon X3, you're going to have all these stock size uh, seat belt bolts. And if you buy these Ace Racing harnesses, you're going to have to drill it out a little bit. So you're going to need that step bit if you want to do it smoothly and not be there for hours on each little uh, buckle. I did this all, all four harnesses in 30 minutes, and that's two buckles per harness, so eight of them, um, with that step bit. And it did it smooth, and I didn't over drill or leave it the whole all ratchet and to where it's not twisting like this smoothly. So now that we got that done, basically we're just going to put the seat back in and get it uh, bolted into place. And then we'll attach these two top harnesses with that extra hardware we showed you. So we'll be right back. Alright guys, so we're going to go ahead and get the seat belt out of the way. The existing seat belt, as you can see, this is where it extracts into is this little uh, roller box. So we've got to take off this little cover to get to the bolt here and the bolt right down here to take those out. That way when we do strap our four point harnesses that will connect right to here, this will be out of the way. So T30 bit is what you're using for these little bolts. Do it easy. This one I always have to do by hand because I put that spare tire bracket that is right in the way for being able to get the drill there. So do this one by hand. So just two screws on here, and then this little cover will pop off real easily, like so. Um, as you can see, here's the bolt for the seatbelt right on the other side. So the other one is actually down here, guys, and when you're doing this, you're going to be want to be extra careful because I don't know what kind of line this is, if this is for fuel, not for fuel it says, and injection, oh, so might be a fuel line, but anyway. So the second bolt, which is right here, it's kind of stashed, but if you look right there, there's another bolt. Well, the back nut is in behind this uh, cover right here. So you're gonna have to take your ratchet wrench and stick it down here to get to that second nut while you're taking the bolt off. Once you do that, this will pop right off and then we're done. We can go ahead and put the seat back in, bolt it in place, and get the final two uh, four point harness straps right here bolted in place and that'll be it. And then we're gonna do the rest for the other seats. Um, and then just save these parts when you take the seatbelt, all the stuff that goes with it. I'd keep it in a box somewhere. Uh, so let me get the tools ready and we'll start this. All right, guys. So number 18 socket for both sides, both bolts. And then we're going to want a number 18 ratchet wrench to get right down to that second bolt. But, uh, yeah. So there you go, that's the first bolt. I'll show you what it looks like. 
That's for the seat belt itself. So just remember that. It comes out like this. And then you're gonna have a washer, a bolt, and a nut. Save that. You can just put it back over this little seat belt once you get it all the way completely off. I just set it to the side for a minute. So the second one is gonna be down at the bottom there. And what I have to do is get my wrench and just get it over that bolt. As you can see how I'm doing. Same thing you're gonna be doing basically. Make sure you don't get nothing else. And then if you guys look, you can see I got it over there. So I'm just gonna use the socket wrench or the, or the drill or the number 18 and undo it from this way. See if it works. You can see how the nut dropped out, which is fine because it's on the ground. Now come back around here. And then we'll just pop this out. Just like that. And that's the second bolt. So there's your whole seat belt. Just save that guy along with your bolts. All right, so here's the seat. You see the harnesses are hanging. I'll get this seat back in a little bit. Sometimes it's a little bit tricky. Once you get it in, you kind of just want to be careful with your threads that the seat brackets are going to go over. You don't want to jack up all the threads because you're being rough. There we go. So there, now you guys can look down there at the actual seat bracket that we guys were showing you guys earlier. If you look down, you can see them right there. And the other one's right here. So you're gonna put the two nuts back on that. Then put your two 13 inch nut and bolts on the front bracket. That'll stabilize the seat. And we'll go ahead and we'll get the final part done where we attach the four point harness up here. And then that's it. That seat will be done. We'll do the same exact thing on the other back seat. And then we'll go ahead and show you guys the front. The front's gonna be a little bit different. You might have to take this little head bump rest off um, or up a little bit so you can get the bolts and tighten them up. But we'll come back here in just a moment. Okay guys, so I went to uh, Tractor Supply. If you guys have one of those stores out there, I was able to get the Series 8, um, which are probably the most durable types. As you can see, I have two washers, a lock washer and a lock nut. That way, no vibrations or anything cause this to slowly unscrew by itself, thus making the seatbelt come apart during travel. Um, so yeah, if you can't find a tractor supply, you're probably gonna have to go one of your local hardware stores, whether it's Lowe's, Home Depot, or whatever they've got. So two bolts, two sets of these for each seat for the top part of the harness. Let's go ahead and take a look at this. We'll get it started. So as you can see back here, here's the area where the top part of your four point harness is gonna go. The way I decided to do it is I'm going to put the harness up like so, right on top there as you can see the hole. I'm going to leave a washer on there and the bolt. That way it holds it just like that, as you can see. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a regular washer and then the lock washer and put it on and then the lock nut last. So you might need to just kind of figure out a way to get that all up there all at the same time. Once you get it on the bottom, it's easy enough to hold with two fingers like that. Then you can just take the nut and get it right down on there like so. Once you get it started, it's gonna to come to the point where it stops because of the lock nut part of the washer or the nut. So that's when you're gonna to have to use your tools, but that's basically how this is going to sit. Once you get it strapped in there tight, it won't go anywhere. That'll pinch it nice and firm. You have a little bit of adjustment room here, but I, would, I wouldn't think you would wanna put it all the way back there. You'd wanna keep it all the way at the front. So if you get yanked with the seat because of an accident, this doesn't give it any play. So keep it up tight like this and then tighten it down. We'll put another set on the other side and then we'll tighten it down. Okay, so we're gonna tighten it. Number 15, ratchet wrench or so on. I'm cheating, I'm using a powered uh, ratchet. If I can get it down in here right. I, don't know. I may not be cheating after all, but. You know what, I can go around the other side. Actually. We're gonna get that on there like so. And I'm just gonna hold this guy. 
once you get it tight and you're gonna use your <clears throat> you're gonna use a regular uh, ratchet wrench by hand put it back under here and then you're just gonna tighten it a little bit more sometimes it's cool to get these flexing ones because you can flex them up and down in the tight spaces so this one I shouldn't have to do it too much but then again it's gonna help because I can and get it to work right. There we go. Maybe about there. Yeah. Then I can stick this down in there with my hand. See if I can get it through the seat. Yeah. Seems like it's already pretty damn tight. All right, guys, so that's how you tighten that. I'll go ahead and do this one and then we'll put the seat back and this one should be ready to test out. All right, guys, so first one's installed in the back seat. Figure we just try this bad boy out here. So you're gonna buckle your bottom. You'll make your adjustments, of course, to get it to fit around your waist or how it's comfortable for you. You're gonna buckle it in like that and take these two straps, pull them down like so. You can hold this strap right here and then pull that down a little bit more and there you go you're strapped in you're not going nowhere and you can even adjust them here depending on how tall you are to the bottom down here just like so then if you guys need to make some slack you can just simply pull these up like this and see how that tightens or loosens it so what you want to do is get this on and if this shoulder seems like it's up a little bit higher then you need to get back here and adjust this one up just slightly so when you do sit in there and you pull them down like this, you're strapped in. So with that being said, there's the first one. We'll go ahead and show you guys how to do the second one. It's just slightly a little bit different because of this little backrest and where you're going to take the seatbelt bolts off to get the complete seatbelt off, but we'll jump right into that next. Okay guys, we're going to do the front seat now that we've showed you the back seat. So here's a better view, bird's eye view of the two nuts, the number 18s right here. And these are the ones that you have to take out for the back part of your seat. And then of course the number 13 nut and bolts on the front. And we'll show you that. Um, the front seat has this pad right here. So I'm not sure if this is going to get in the way when we go to tighten the top part of the four point harness straps that go right into the front of the seat here. We'll find that out, but right now we're just going to go ahead and loosen these up. See guys, this is a little bit of a tight area, so I can't necessarily get um, a ratchet wrench in here or even an extension. So I'm going to have to just loosen these by hand. It's like so. It doesn't take much. Once you get that nut going, you can almost do it by hand after a minute, like so. And then... There's that part like we showed you before. Same with this guy. Let's get it on there. Make sure you get on there right. Because if you don't, what you'll end up doing is you'll end up stripping it. And you don't want to do that. Alright. That's a little bit tight there, so. Let's see. Sometimes you gotta just work with it. So now we got on. There you go, just like that. Once it stops turning really ratcheting, then just kind of pull that off, pull that off, do the rest by hand. And that's how easy it is to get to the two front back nuts compared to the back seat because of the firewall for the engine. It's right up against that, making it hard to get to these guys. So now we'll go do the front real quick. Okay, so we got the two back nuts off. Now these two bolts, number 13 for the nut and for the bolt itself. There's one over here as well. If you can see this one, one there, one there. Once you take that off, the seat will come out of the place, uh, the area it's at, and then you'll just take your seatbelt bolt off. Then we can go ahead and do the next. See how easy that comes when you have the right tool. Now be careful when you're taking these out because this is where you can strip the threads real good. Just kind of feel it, turn it if you need to a little bit, just so you don't mess the threads up. And put your nut back on so you don't lose that. Keeping my little bowl. So for this longer one, like you probably, if you've been keeping up with my videos, you've seen it. But 
I use these swivel extensions all day long on this beast because it's one of the greatest things Snap-on invented. Now you can see from here, instead of having to get two, check it out guys, it reaches all the way over there. Just like so. Man. Then what I can do is I just take my... Oops. On it. There it is. And then once you get it loosened, so you don't lose this nut, just do the rest by hand. And if you can't, well then, give it another little go. That should do it. So, now that we've got these done, I can put those to the side and we'll just get the seat out, take the seat belt, bolt off, and then we'll show you guys how to remove the seat belt and the retracting box that the seat belt goes into from this little area. It's a little bit different than the back seat one. So this little area right here, we'll go ahead and show you how we got the seat belt bolts off of this side versus the back that we've already done. A um, little bit different, and then the headrest when we go to mount the harness. Nice and easy, just be careful. Seat belt is still attached to the seat, so I just find it easier to take this seat belt off last because you're already like able to stretch it out with the seat belt. So I don't know, it's just me. But 5 8 uh, socket to take the seat belt off. The bolt, if you reuse this seat belt bolt anyway. So, take that off, that to the side for a second. Don't lose the little washer that goes on this. So if you do, it's not going to be smooth when it's rubbing with the seatbelt. Okay, so what I would recommend doing is after you get your seat out for the front, you know, find a little smooth area to put it on. I use this old carpet, it doesn't hurt anything. And I would go ahead and just put this right back in there for the time being until you get your harness on it so you don't lose it. Just make sure you don't cross thread. If you do, you're going to be screwed because these seats are expensive, I'm sure, to buy a whole new bracket and seat and everything. Take this one loose. your buckle and then put that one back in for the time being too you can see there's some Loctite on that you can put some on or just leave the old if you're not gonna be going into this for a while just put some on but if you're gonna be taking these in and out over a period of time for new accessories and just Loctite it on the last time okay so we'll go ahead and get the harness on this one the only difference was was this headrest guys that you can see so once we go to put the nut in, it's just about being able to get a ratchet or your tools in there. Other than that, you shouldn't have to take this off for any reason. Um, if you can get your hands in there, have your seat all the way forward and just tighten them up, then there's no point in taking that off. So we'll go ahead and do the harness. We'll show you one more time real quick on this one too. Um, one thing I will show you guys um, for the front seat. And I'll go ahead and do this. I should have probably done it at the beginning of the video, but I almost forgot it myself. So on these Can-Am Maverick X3s, it doesn't matter which version you have, uh, they have a limiter built into the seatbelt buckle sensor um, for the driver's side. So if you don't have your seatbelt plugged in and it doesn't sense that it's plugged in, it won't let the machine go over 25 miles per hour. So that's where it becomes an issue because you're going to be taking that buckle out um, thus not having any seatbelt bucking, buckling into this right here. So what you want to do is you want to get one of these bypass connector um, accessories. It's just like a little buckle with a wire going through it. Once we take the seat in this out, we're going to just plug that in and that's going to bypass it and make it think the seatbelt's always plugged in. So that way that limiter sensor doesn't turn the machine down to 25 mile per hour restriction and then you can't go any faster. So we'll show you guys that when we get to that seat. All right, guys, so let's get this rested in there like the last one. Make sure you get it, the strap straight, because if you twist this strap and then buckle it in, 
you're gonna have to take the bolt off and the seat back out to uh, twist the seat belt around the right way. And that could take some time, and time is in essence right now, so. Once again, it paid off making those holes a little bit wider because now this goes in there and spins the way it should. So, get that started. Ooh. Make sure that that washer is all the way up and the seat belt is up too before you tighten it. It didn't hurt nothing, but it's like so. Bam, that's it. Now, seat belt's twisting right, facing the right direction. Turn it around. Make sure it's straight. Get it through. Once you get it through, that's what's great about having this little carpet is it helps us to be able to keep from scratching up the seat when we're moving it around doing this. Once again, get that all the way up in there, not like this, but up in there. Get it started, that way you don't cross thread it before you use your impact. And don't hammer it to death, just get it started. Remember, so don't leave this down here when you go tighten it, get it up over that smooth part. And if it starts to not go in, stop. Because you don't want to cross thread your seat. So, just make sure. And that's what I'm saying is guys, is you wanna, and this is a good point to see it right now, the verse is actually cross threading the seat. So, I would just suggest getting this thing way down there. Almost by hand. And that ensures that this thing is going in right. And see, it's getting down to the bottom where it's trying to kind of make sure these threads aren't messed up. No, they're not. Just being a little bit of a difficult bolt. But we'll go ahead and get this one finished. I know you guys are watching, but once you get it down, I would just hand tighten it from this point. If you have any trouble with any of them, that way you're not forcing it in and ruining it because you want to take these off again. You don't want to have an issue. You can see how easy it's going. So that's showing me it's a little bit tight. And the reason it's going to be a little bit tight feeling, guys, so don't get it mixed up with cross threading, is that if you haven't taken these bolts back out back and forth like I've done, they're really tight at first. So there you go. So being able to see a little bit of troubleshooting in action, save your seat belts. Now, you can see those are in, everything's straight. I wanna make sure that those are always straight. Check that, because if they're twisted, you're gonna be having to take the seat back. In. So now we're ready to just stick it back in. We'll come back to you guys in just a second once we figure out if uh, we need to do anything special as far as that bump headrest goes for uh, these uh, top four point harness straps. Okay guys, so we're gonna go ahead and get the seat belt off for the front seat now that we've put the seat back in. We haven't bolted it, we've just got it there. We've still gotta strap these top parts of the harness, so just kind of seeing how everything's resting in place. So you need to take these two T30 screws out for this little cover. And it should pop right off like the other one we did on the back seat. If it doesn't, then you just be careful. Make sure, and actually see, glad and force it. Haven't took this one off yet for anything, so it's the first time taking this cover off. There, so now you got two of your bolts. See this one down here? Seatbelt bolt, seatbelt bolt. So you're gonna take both of those guys out. All right, we're gonna take out the seatbelt bolt now. Number 18. And there's another one down here below. That's all you gotta do for those two bolts. This is real easy. Like that. 
get your seat out, seat belt. Don't forget about that washer just fell. There you go. Once again, another seat belt taken out. It's really not that bad, guys, if you just have the right tools. So I would just take a bolt, stick it through there, put your nut back on. What the heck did I just hit to make it do that? Put your nuts back on like that. It just keeps them from getting lost. So if you go to use this again, you know what hardware goes with what. So there it is. Just keep that safe. So now that that's out, I can put this cover back on because I'm not going to be putting these bolts back through here for now. I mean, I could um, per se, I guess, but I don't really see the reason to. Cover's going to go over that anyways and cover it so no one's going to be able to see it. But a matter of opinion. So get this one back on. Get it in place. Bottom has to go in first. Stick a screw in, get started. They all have little bits of uh, like the yellow Loctite on them, so it kind of helps keep them in place. Once you get them all going, That's it on that, so that puts that back into place. So now that we have the uh, seat back in, we have the seat belt removed, um, all we gotta do is strap the top straps in. So what I'm gonna do first real quick is throw the two bolts back on the back of the seat in the front, all four of them, the two nuts and the two bolts, so that way we can get that seat locked down in place. And then we'll come right back and uh, show you guys how to strap these ones with the two uh, bolts that we bought, the custom sets of bolts and nuts, and get them locked up in there. Okay guys, so let's get the strap for the front seat harness put in place. Make sure you don't twist it around and put it in with a twisted belt. Make sure your belt is straight. So we're going to put a washer, stick it right in there like so, and I'll stick a regular washer, then a lock washer, and then the lock nut under that. Just get it hand tight for a second. Just like so. Now we're going to do the same with the other one. And then once we get that done, you guys will have seen the back seat four point harness installation and the front seat four point harness installation. So we'll finish up the other back seat without filming it. And then once we get to the driver's seat and get it removed, I'll show you guys that seatbelt bypass switch that I showed you and where it goes, so that way you guys know where to put that. Other than that, no matter which harnesses you guys buy, you're going to need to get that seatbelt bypass on Amazon if you want to get it quick and cheap, or if you know of a place that sells them locally, then I would just go do it locally at your local uh, UTV shops. But yeah, so that way you can bypass that 25 mile per hour limiter that's built into the machine for seatbelt purposes. So there, now you guys see those. Um, as far as getting in there, there's no real easy way I would say to get in there. Like I have this ratchet wrench so I kind of just am getting under the bottom like that. And then once I get it on there, I'm just taking my And you want to kind of hold it straight with your fingers right there, just like that. Then what you can do is just take this wrench, leave your ratchet on there, and just tighten it by hand, turn it a little bit more this way again. Then that way you can hold this buckle straight so it's not tilted off this way or that way when you tighten it straight. So it fits through the seat, get it real good like that. And look, that's all you got to do to get both of these. And then you can see the buckle is straight. Same for this one. It's going to come right under there with the ratchet wrench and come through wherever I can get it just like that now let's get it straight and then tighten it 
and I can leave the ratchet on the bottom as kind of an extra wrench and just like that. I know it's kind of hard to see with my hand there, but there we go. And then look how easy that was. You didn't have to take this off. The seat's already locked down, so everything goes back in. Look how it fits perfect. You just got to make your fine adjustments, guys, on this. Um, of course, these are way too long, so I'm going to get them pulled in and strapped up. You're going to make your adjustments here for this shoulder length to get these up. And then, of course, depending on the size of the passenger, you want to adjust your bottom harnesses. I already showed you on the back how to tighten and loosen these really fast. So that's how you're going to make the adjustments on these. But make sure these are straight when you go to mount them. And that's it, guys. That's all you got to do to put these harnesses in. Besides the seatbelt restriction limiter bypass uh, switch that we have, uh, it's not even a switch, it's like a bypass, whatever you want to call it, wire. <laughs> um, but yeah, that's it, and that's how you get these in. We'll come back, show you that last little bit we were talking about with the bypass, and then we'll, uh, we'll get to the outro. Okay guys, so we've gotten all the other harnesses in. We showed you how to do the back one, the front one. We already had, did this back one as well. Um, we're getting this final seat out to do it, and I wanted to show you guys about the bypass uh, limiter that keeps your machine from going over 25 if your seatbelt isn't plugged in. That's where this wire comes into play. So you're going to have to lift this little black clip right here up a little bit. Basically, you just pull it up, and then that comes apart. And then we're going to take our little switch. While we're fresh in the making, we'll just show you it right away. And once again, just in case you forgot, it's this guy right here. It's like a little, it's basically what this is with a looped wire on it to make the signal feel as if the seatbelt's plugged in. So just, like I said, I'll throw a description in the uh, link in the description um, on this so you guys know where to get them. Just gonna take it, put it right in there like that. These ones might be a little tight guys. You just gotta be careful and don't force it. There it goes. All right, so just be patient with it. The little prongs have gotta rest in the little holes of this uh, bypass switch. So once you get it on there, um, this is coming off. You can take this little plastic cap. There's like a little screw, uh, flathead screwdriver will fit in there and this little gray piece will slide off, put it on there. And then you can clip it back to the side of your console, which will basically keep uh, it out of the way of your seat. So now the seat's ready to come out. We'll go ahead and pull the seat out. You guys have already seen how to do all this, so there's no point in showing you guys again how to put the harness on the seat. We've already gotten that far. How to take the seat belt off of the seat. And you guys know it's the same way that you took the seats to get them back in. So we're gonna finish up with this, do our outro, and then uh, we'll give you the forecast for the next video. Quick uh, recap on this one too. As you can see, there is the seatbelt buckle that comes off the driver's side and that's what that cord was plugged into for the bypass for the seatbelt sensor. Once you take that out, save the bolt, and this will actually look like that. So that's the final one we're doing. And that was the whole point of putting in that little sensor uh, buckle or clip that we put in there Just so that way you can Go ahead and drive around with no seatbelt on and still go past 25 Cried saying that I was a right Jared I was right by your side You manipulate them playing games Your friends commentators And I don't know what you say about our private conversations But it's got them hating Thanks to all the rumors you be claiming It's cool I'm done with you So they can throw you a celebration You gon' hate it when you see me with somebody living better I'm trying to tell you that me just doing me Gon' have you jealous, uh I know that I Gotta stay away from all your games So we are at the final stage of the video. Went ahead and showed you how to take out the back seat, 
how to uh, get the front seat taken out, and we also showed you how to change or add a little bypass uh, for the seatbelt sensor, so that way you can go over 25 without a seatbelt on since you're swapping the harnesses and taking the stock seatbelts out. Um, I want to thank you guys for uh, sticking with the whole video, watching it. appreciate you guys tuning into the channel. Um, if you're not subscribed, please uh, consider subscribing to the channel. It helps. Uh, we're still trying to hit that thousand subscribers. So uh, we appreciate you guys for every video you do watch. Um, next video we're going to be doing, we're going to be on the exclusive trip in a different area with the machine, putting it into uh, some uh, performance positions up in different areas, water, mountains, lakes, all that good stuff. So that's coming up. Um, and then we'll get back on track with some more uh, installation videos. I appreciate you guys tuning in to Review TV. Have a good one. Was it real or just pretend? Tell me 